Here are the top reasons why your iPhone could be randomly restarting. In today's video, we're gonna walk through the iPhone 14 Pro Max, what parts cause it to restart, as well as some of the other models that I've tested. We're gonna also review the panic logs, so we're not just guessing as to what's causing the restart. We wanna know exactly how to read the panic log, how to go straight to solving the problem. So if you appreciate these type of videos, make sure you subscribe and you'll be learning more about diagnosing, troubleshooting, and micro solder repairs. So let's go ahead and get started. So the key to resolving a device that's randomly restarting is actually looking at the panic logs. So there's many ways to do this. If you don't have a computer or anything nearby, what you can do is go to your settings, scroll down to privacy and security. Here at the bottom, you wanna to go to analytics and improvements. And here at the top, you wanna to go to analytics data. Now you see a bunch of files here. The important one are the ones that are called panic full and it's sorted by the most uh, oldest at the top. So you wanna scroll down to the very last one of this panic full list, which is this one. And then this is what the panic log looks like. Now the important part is really just at the top section. So no need to scroll down any further. And what we wanna look for is just some keywords here. So this is what we wanna study. And then in a bit, I'll show you exactly kind of what to look for. So for this model, usually when it's a parts issue, you'll see SMC panic assertion failed. And really what we wanna look for is the sensor array, and then it says 0 4, 0 x 0, and then this code right here, 0 x, and then some number. So let's go through kind of the most common of these error codes. And based on that, we can figure out what's causing the restart. So here's a cheat sheet that I've generated based on my experience and troubleshooting and testing. So let's walk through each one. Now, as, I, as you see here, it's very important to test with known good parts. Known good parts means that you've tested and confirmed they're good. You cannot rely on a brand new part because it could be defective or if an aftermarket part can be defective. Also, it's very important to have these plugged in when you're testing. I, I've seen some people say, you know, the charging port, you know, check that. And what they do is they unplug it and test that way. That does not work. It needs to be plugged in for you to do the test. Otherwise, you will see this. So iPhone X, XS, and XS Max, there's an issue with the charging port. You'll see in the panic log, PRS0 or Mic1. Now, if you see a TGOB or TGOV, that's usually battery related. So either the battery itself is defective, the battery connector, either on the battery itself or on the board, or the data pins. So batteries do communicate with the motherboard. And if there's any issues with that communication, it will cause the three minute restart and it will give you these panic logs. And this is true for pretty much every model, but I just listed it here, so I don't forget to mention it to you guys. Um, Next is the 11 series. So these also exact same thing as 10S, 10S, 10S Max, but these also require the power button for some reason, which you'll see on the panic log as mic two. And for the iPhone 11 specifically, what you wanna look for is a sandwich issue. Sometimes what happens is the iPhone 11 power button actually plugs in at the bottom board, unlike the 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, which plugs in on the top board. On the bottom board, what can happen is a separation issue. And that happens that essentially the same as the power button flex being unplugged, which is where the mic two sensor sits. So what can happen is the sandwich separates, that mic two line does not make it to the audio IC, and then you have a restart issue. So take a look at that, diode mode the connector, and you'll see there's an open line. And like the other models, TGOB or TGOV is gonna be a battery issue. Now 12 series, they can also have the exact same thing with all the previous models where the charging port is required to be plugged in. Interestingly enough, I just fixed an iPhone 12 that had the PRS zero message. I was testing with known good parts and it turns out there's actually a short within the bottom board. So not everything's gonna be what I mentioned here. Sometimes even if it says PRS zero, it doesn't mean it's a charging port. What I found is on the DC power supply, it was pulling 20 milliamps before prompt to boot. And with my Seek thermal camera, I found there was heat coming from the side of the interposer. And that's how, where I saw a tiny bit of corrosion in there. I used some flux and hot air, kind of bubbled that away. And now the device is no longer restarting. 
Now 13 Pro Max, I've seen SMC assertion failed and I've heard that the charging port and or the proximity flex can cause this restart, although I haven't tested it, but I did want to just mention it here because the 14 Pro Max has the same assertion failed, but I've seen other people mention the codes you see are slightly different. So these are the ones I personally tested and confirmed that if you see this, a 0X4000, it means a charging port. If you see 0X8000, that means a prox flex. And if you see 1000, that's a power button flex. So any of these three are defective, damaged, unplugged, can cause a three minute restart with a SMC assertion failed. And for the iPhone SE 2020, it's super common that the charging port itself is causing a three minute restart with a mic one or a board issue. So let me show you guys the easiest way to solve the board issue part because there's an update to my solution. So this is the quickest way to deal with the iPhone SE 2020 with the long jumpers. And these are three jumpers, two of them to stop the restart and then one of them to solve no touch. So I'll walk through it in detail, which I'll link down below as well. But as you can see, basically the idea is to run the two mic one jumpers from the charging port area to the resistors on the side of the CPU. Super simple. And then the touch one, that's the one you want to scrape out the trace for it. Trying to scrape out the three traces and try to run jumpers all three next to each other is not practical. So I don't recommend you do that. If you run the ones like this, you'll have a much easier time. It'll be done in less than 30 minutes and you'll have a warranty free device. You don't have to worry about if you fix touch, now a few weeks later you get the three minute restart or vice versa. So take a look at this and you should be good. Now real quick regarding the 14 Pro Max restart issue. Um, so this is what the panic log will look like. You'll see that there's a SMC panic assertion failed and then the sensor array and then here's the hex code that you wanna look at. And if, now if you wanna translate that hex code into binary, you can figure out which bits relate to which part. So if you have multiple flexes unplugged, like if you have the proximity flex and the charging port flex unplugged, you'll see this binary number translates to a hex value of C. And this is what you'll see in the panic log. So if you get a sensor array, blah, 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 0XC, that means both the prox and the charging port is calling, causing the restart. Now, one thing that does throw me off because I'm still kind of researching this and trying to figure out how this works, is if you have the prox flex and the power button flex, I actually get a hex code of uh, 0x18, which that doesn't translate to these bits, but I don't know, if you're a developer and can better understand this type of coding, let me know down below in the comments. But this is kind of my research so far and maybe you'll find this useful. Now, if you've seen my previous video about the panic logs, I talked about the panic log analyzer, which is a tool that lets you look at the panic logs through your PC, which is a great tool. I highly recommend you guys donate here by clicking this link down below and donate to Wayne for developing this tool and keeping it updated. Now, one thing about this tool is now there's a new feature. You can delete all the panic logs that are in the existing device so that when you're trying to troubleshoot, you don't get mixed up with some of the old ones or new ones, especially when you have a ton, it's pretty nice to be able to delete them and then start your testing so you can rule out, you know, the parts you're, you're doing. So definitely check that out. Also, another thing I do want to mention is that I see this a lot is don't rely on these possible issues hundred percent. These are just suggestions. These are things that the developer thought to maybe suggest you to check but not everything has a solution. And really what you wanna look for is just this top section. Like I mentioned, this one has SMC assertion failed, and then you wanna look for this, uh, this code here. Now there's a new tool that I wanna tell you guys about that you might enjoy as well. So using 3U tools, they've now added to the latest version, this crash analysis thing right here. So you can see it says 37 times. What you wanna do is click crash details now the downside to 3U tools to look at the panic logs is uh, one is that these are all unorganized so they're not set by you know oldest newest it's all random also these kind of codes here are really wrong like pretty much everything says 
CPU caller check CPU basically. One of the things you want to do is use a panic log analyzer to erase all the panic logs. So that way you start fresh and you only have a few here. As you can see, I have a ton. And then what you do is you click on the one you want to look at, click on view crash code, which pulls up the pure log like we were looking on the phone. And then let me tell you about this new tool called panicful.com, which you can find here, panicful.com. Here at the top, make sure you put it into English. And this is how you use this tool. You have two options. You can upload the actual file, which is a lot of work, or just copy paste it from 3 tools. So control V or right click paste, paste the code, click analyze. And then here come some suggestions. So just like the panic log analyzer, you don't want to rely specifically on these solutions. It's just suggestions. So when there's a known solution, it does recommend that. And it's pretty nice because if there's multiple um, issues here, you can you know, check them off as you test it to kind of rule that out. Uh, you could also click here to see the log you submitted. And then also query history. You can see all the panic logs that I've submitted as well, which I've done a lot. So this is a pretty cool tool. It's another option for those of you who want to be able to use a different service that can scan the panic logs. So if you have any other panic log messages that are not the ones that I've covered here, this is when you want to turn to different tools like this, a panic full panic log analyzer. Also, I do have on my website. So if you go to vccboardrepairs.com, go to repair blog, you'll find it here, panic log errors. And then here at the bottom, there's some other panic logs that I got from a friend, which apparently the source was pro mobile. Here's some other kind of panic logs you may see with their proposed solution or, you know, at least what a check. So definitely check that out, which I will link down below. Also real quick, I do want to talk about this one case that I had that was very interesting. This is a tennis max that was water damaged. And here you'll, you'll see kind of what I was dealing with. I was getting a PRS zero three minute restart and I was downloading the charging port connector. I was testing with just the known good screen, known good battery and known good charging port. And it was still giving me PRS zero. And here you can see PRS zero on the panic log tool. What it turned out to be is actually a resistor. It was resistor R6822. It had basically came off the board because it was water damage and the pads were corroded away. And essentially it is a PP1V8 IMU S2 to I2C1 AOP SDA. Basically it is a data line that was disconnected. That was part of the, I guess, PRS zero circuit. Um, I don't know exactly what it does. My thinking is that it's a potassium sensor. Like if you look at the schematics, that's kind of where it's kind of located. So I don't know if you know more about this, let me know down below in the comments, make sure you guys join the Facebook group, the phone repair community. I will, I post a lot of these solutions on there as well. And if you have any questions or you're having a three minute restart issue and not sure what could be causing it, make sure you guys, uh, post it there, post a screenshot of your panic log. You know, really the important part is this top section. So post that and you know, we'll give you suggestions, but as always make sure you guys use the tools first, try do some troubleshooting. Don't just post a panic log and ask what's the solution. Do some research yourself. There's a ton of information on the internet, including, you know, I have multiple videos on this topic. Use the panicful.com website, use my website with some known solutions. I see a lot recently of like I2C1, I2C2, I2C3. So basically that's telling you what line to check. So pull up the schematics and uh, ZXW and look at, you know, what those connect to. Uh, if you have an iPhone SE 2020, you can refer to this. So there's a lot of information, make sure you utilize it. You know, it's all free online and, you know, test with known good parts. So now you should be fully informed about what parts cause three minute restart, how to check the panic log and use the different tools available like panic full, panic log analyzer, 3 tools. Also make sure you guys share this video across social media. Whenever you see someone posting about their panic logs, if you have a device that you need repaired because it is restarting, 
I will have my contact info down below. If you wanna get a t-shirt like this one, the Even Solder Bro, I will link it below as well. Now I did mention in my last video about how I'm now working with Lewis Rossman so we can contribute to the Repair Wiki website, which I will link down below. Essentially it's a crowdsourced website where people can post solutions to any electronic device. So whether it's phones, tablets, computers, graphics cards, you know, drones, you name it. It's a crowdsourced site. You know, I am looking for those people who can contribute to the site and get paid for it. So reach out to me on my website, which will also be linked down below. If you want to be a paid contributor, you do have to have good knowledge, a lot of solutions and be able to clearly explain solutions that will be helpful to everyone. So appreciate all you guys sticking around here till the end. Don't forget, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.